Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday, number 131 on the Mana Leak. I'm John, as always, and we've got ourselves another pack of Iconic Masters. We're going to crack this open, see what's in it, and see what we would take. Pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. And I've pushed record on the camera, so we actually get to see the first few cards this week. Such as Thought Scour. Thought Scour is a single blue mana for an instant target player. Puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Draw a card. Uh, I talked about this last week. There's a dedicated blue-black mill deck, and this goes in it. You mill your opponent with Thought uh, Scour as opposed to milling yourself, which is what you originally did with this card. Uh, draws you a card. Totally fine. Totally not a first pick. Mark of Mutiny is up next. Not sure where this card is from. Two and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And untap it. That creature gains haste until end of turn. This is the threat and effect for the set. It's fine if you like threat and effects. Uh, I will say there is the, the corner case of this not being good if you don't win the game with it. And it gets a counter on it and your opponent gets it back. Which I think makes it even worse than usual threat and effects. But of course you should only be using and playing threat and effects if you are ending the game with them. Uh, do not play them to just get in a few extra points of damage. It's not worth it. And they're never ever a first pick anyways. Survival Cache is up next. Looks pretty Zendikari, but I don't recognize the card. Two and a white for a sorcery. You gain two life. Then if you have more life than an opponent, draw a card. And rebounds. You get to cast it again. Uh, yeah, in the life gain deck, I guess this will hopefully draw you a card or two and also gain you four life. Uh, there's way better ways of gaining life, though, and way better stuff to do with it. So Survival Cache, I probably would cut pretty heavily and never, ever first pick. Repeal is a card I would certainly first pick. It is right up my alley. Repeal is X and a blue for an instant. Return target non-land permanent with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand and draw a card. Bouncing whatever I want as long as I have mana for it and drawing a card so I don't even one for one myself or I don't even uh, uh, lose tempo by losing this card. I actually get to replace it. Super good. I love Repeal. I would first pick Repeal. I really, really like it. Wrench Mind is up next. Black, black for a sorcery. Target player discards two cards unless he or she discards an artifact card. Uh, there's some controlly decks in this format, which is great. I, I love when sets actually really, really uh, have control decks in there. And Wrench Mind can go in it, but I'm not a super big fan of it. Um, you need to have a solid, solid control deck for this to be something that I'd be willing to play. Um, and it's certainly not a first pick, even if you are thinking about doing that. Timberland Guide is up next. One and a green for a creature human scout. It's a 1-1 one, one. when Timberland Guide enters the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So it's a 2-2 two, two for two or it's a 1-1 one, one for two that puts a counter on something else. Decent in the green-white deck, but nowhere near a first pick. Up next is Blinding Mage. Blinding Mage is one and a white for a 1-2. Pay a white, tap, tap target creature. Tappers are really good, or at least they used to be really good. There's been some bad tappers in recent history that have either cost too much to play or cost too much to tap or they had really strict restrictions on it like only tapping flyers uh, but this is uh, almost as good as you can get on tappers there are cheaper ones there are ones where you don't even have to pay mana to tap things uh, but blinding mage is really good and i would certainly consider first picking it crown Ceratok is up next it's three and a green for a four three trample each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample fine just like timberland guide fine in the green white deck nowhere ever near a first pick Moon Glove Extract is pretty bad. Three generic mana for an artifact. Sack it to deal two damage to our creature or player. This is very similar, possibly identical to the Dragon Vial of Dragonfire or whatever it was from Dragon's Block, uh, Con's Block rather. Uh, it's not great if you really desperately need an artifact for some reason, I guess. Uh, but there's so many better cards. So I, I would generally not play this, let alone first pick it. Thrill Kill Assassin is our final common. Thrill Kill Assassin is one in a black for a 1-2 creature human assassin with death touch, and it has Unleash. So when it comes to play, you can put a counter on it, and uh, if you do ever have a plus one plus one counter on it, regardless of how it got it, if it gets it later, it still uh, does not... Uh, it still acts as though it's been unleashed, which means it cannot block. Thrill Kill Assassin's pretty good. I, I would consider first picking it in weaker packs. I wouldn't first pick it uh, above these two cards, however. So see a Thrill Kill. Our first uncommon used to be a rare. It's a one and a green for assault formation. It's an enchantment. Each creature you control deals combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Pay a green mana. Target creature with defender can attack this turn uh, as though it didn't have defender. Pay two and a green. 
Creatures you control get plus one plus O oh until end of turn. There is a blue green defenders deck in this uh, format, and I actually played a variation of it at FNM last week. And uh, I didn't have assault formation. Uh, my defender deck was basically defend, hold up the walls, play one of several bombs. Uh, but this deck is play your walls and then attack with them. Very, very fun deck if you can get it to go together. Uh, I think you could probably consider first picking Assault Formation if you just want to dive into that deck, uh, but I don't think I'd first pick it against either of those two cards, unfortunately. Our second uncommon is very bad. Three green green for a sorcery. It's called Enlarge. Has very weird photorealistic cat art. Uh, target creature gets plus seven, plus seven against Trample until end of turn. It must be blocked this turn if able. Uh, I don't like this card. Yes, plus seven, plus seven is a lot. Yes, it must be blocked. It doesn't mean it has to be blocked by the entire team. It must be blocked. And unless this is ending the game, I, I just don't feel like this is doing anything. It's very similar to, to uh, a hijack, to Mark of Mutiny, which we talked about at the start of this video. Uh, yeah, I don't like Enlarge. I, I didn't like it in the set it was in. It was in M15 or Origins. I don't remember which. Um, I, I would not be first picking this, and I would generally not even be playing Enlarge. Not a fan of it. Our final uncommon is Bog Brew Witch. Three and a black for a creature human wizard. It's a 1-3. Pay two generic mana, tap it. Search your library for a card named Festering Newt or Bubbling Cauldron. Put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. There's a combo if you can assemble it with Bog Brew Witch, uh, Bubbling Cauldron, and Festering Newt. You get to sacrifice the Newt, which gets to hopefully kill a creature or at least weaken a creature. It gains you life from the Cauldron. The Cauldron does, I think it lets you get the Newt back or something. It's a cool little combo that you can do if you can get all the pieces together. I'm way not willing to just hope that I'm going to get all those pieces. The cauldron isn't uncommon. Other people are probably going to want to do it. So I would never really ever consider first picking a bog brew witch. Our foil is a furnace whelp, two and a red, or sorry, two red red. For a creature dragon with flying, it's a two two. Pay red, furnace whelp gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It's an okay card. It goes in many red decks, uh, but the dragon deck, of course, most wants it because it's a common dragon that you can easily get your hands on. And then all the things like draconic roar or things that you want to reveal a dragon for or that a dragon helps out, uh, this is a great way of doing it, as is dragon egg for that matter. But I would never first pick a furnace whelp, even if it's foil. A dragon that I might first pick is Jugan. The Rising Star. Three, green, green, green for a legendary creature dragon spirit at common, or at common, at rare. It's a 5-5. Five, five. It's got flying. When Jugan the Rising Star dies, you may distribute five plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures. I prefer a lot of the other dragons. In fact, I might prefer every one of the other four dragons. Uh, but a 5-5 five, five flying in green for six mana is still really good. And if your opponent does get it, getting to put that power and toughness across your other creatures, however you want it, is really, really, really good. I think Jugan would be a solid first pick here. I think it does compete with Blinding Mage and Repeal. I think it probably competes a little bit more with Blinding Mage. Um, but for me, not knowing the format inside and out, I'd probably just take the splashy rare. I feel like Blinding Mage might be slightly more correct though, but I'm on the rare. Let me know what you do. You would have taken, though, in the comments below. Would you have taken Jugan? Would you have taken the Blinding Mage, the Repeal? Is there something I totally missed? Are you all in on Assault Formation or Bog Brew Witch? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash Mana Leak, Twitch.tv slash Mana Leak, and Patreon.com slash Mana Leak if you want to become a backer there. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise. See y'all next time.